Welcome back to the Half Faster Challenge right here on twitch.tv slash the Robin Dan Show. Sitting down with Tropo, the man, the myth, the legend from Sacrilege. You are the head man to talk to. How are you, sir? Good, man. Good. Now, is, is Sacrilege a cooperative at all, or are you the the man to speak to? You're the you're the head individual. Uh well, it's a co-op uh between me and YOLO. And mm -hmm. uh I guess I took the reins due to Yolo not being around anymore. So yeah. What happened to Yolo uh, Swag Jesus? Because he was he was a pretty prominent member. What happened to him exactly? Uh well, people need to move on in life and get jobs and stuff. You have to pay the bill somehow. Exactly. So he's uh studying and finished studying and now he needs to try and find a job, so he's pretty in depth with that and I don't think he could uh do anything else other than that. Well, that that is unfortunate. Do you know what he was studying on, just on the side? Um, he finished studying IT, and he, uh, I believe, he did get his, uh, I don't know if you call it diploma or a certificate in that. Uh, probably certificate. And then he's doing uh, electrical engineering now, uh, so to become an electrician, I guess. Wow. Well, there you go. Hopefully, we see him back soon. So you are you are the leader of Cake, uh, not Cake, Sacrilege. Oh, I'm thinking about my own clan. Jesus. Um. You're the leader of Sacrilege. You you have really pushed your guys to fight hard in the Festus Challenge. How did Sacrilege come about in the first place? And how did you and Yolo Swag Jesus get into the leadership positions that you, you are and were in? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we were a part of a team or a, or mm -hmm. a large group of people called TCD. Uh what did that stand for? The Celestial Dragons. And it was uh, a clan run by Fade. And then there were a couple other people that would help organize it, sure, like uh, sure. Velvet and uh, Niels Jules, which I'm sure everyone knows those two. Oh, yeah. Those names are, are well recognized. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that clan really should have been a great clan. But uh, we went to the Spire tournament, and uh, we had a guy that was like the best Spire pilot in the back in the day. No kidding. And uh, he doesn't play anymore. But. Uh, basically, we're uh, disappointed with the result in coming second against the Ducks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because if you put the best players and the best pilot forward, you should win. And I think we put uh, the pilots that were had more time or whatever it was. And uh, I wasn't happy with that decision, and I spoke about it. And then uh, things started to change, but it wasn't enough change. And uh, I mean, me and Yolo won a whole lot of matches with the crew uh, that we have now against you know different clans back in the day and mm -hmm. uh so we just well i decided that i was just going to randomly disappear and leave i said i pretty much there was this massive skype call and i typed in there i said look guys i've had enough i'm out of here and uh two days later yolo came to me and said look i actually agree with everything you've written there for reason for leaving and uh i'm gonna leave too do you want to start our own clan with blackjack and hookers? And and from that it was it was pretty much born that second. And uh, and we were actually in a party chat with seven other people, and they all said, "Yeah, we'll join." Mm -hmm. So we had uh, seven people, including me and Yolo, I should say. Uh, was that? And it was. Are those all those the people from uh, were from Celestial Guardians? Uh, Celestial Dragons. Yeah. So we had. There were a couple other mm -hmm. people that didn't actually end up joining our group, but they did leave TCD at the same time. Also good players and still in the community now. Uh, so anyway, we went on to, to do this. It took us a long time to come up with a name. And uh, yeah, so we came up with that name. And then we, we formed a group. Uh, at the time, you had to have 16 people to form a clan. So we kind of felt like on the outer edge of the, of the group. So we couldn't play Cogs, because they said we couldn't. Uh, so we went on with uh, trying to play the Sunday Rumble. I think the first Sunday Rumble we played, I want to say it was Sunday Rumble 8. Is that, when, sure you, is that when you first started com uh, competing a as a singular team? As our own sacrilege team, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was Sunday Rumble 8. Now, so that was that the first one. In that short five-month time span since then, uh, you guys have put together a very competitive clan. Right now, you're two and two. 
in the Hephaestus Challenge. You've had some very solid takedowns. Uh, last week, you did get uh, you did get 5-0'd by the Globewater Thralls, but that's nothing to sneeze at. The Globewater Thralls are an amazing team. Uh, you've had some amazing victories. Uh, you've taken on teams such as well, the Art of War, which hasn't quite been as competitive as, as people might have hoped. Uh, but you've also taken on, I believe, in week number one, where is it? Uh, the Sky Invading Rhinos, which have been an amazing team. You 5 2 yeah. them. Very good job with that. Uh, how do you feel Sacrilege has done so far in Hephaestus Challenge? And where are you guys right now competitively? Uh, competitively? I think we're really good uh, with mm -hmm. it, within ourselves. We're pretty happy with what we're doing. Uh, there's a few people that that uh, don't really like the tournament format anymore, so they will probably be leaving us, unfortunately. But you know, things will change, and and we'll probably uh, make another team and and start again. But uh, at the moment, I feel like the team is doing really well. Uh, I personally feel like I need a break after this. Uh, as far as competitively, we we always try to be the best competition for the other team, so that they have a fun match, just like how we would. Um, and it, it is about having fun, and uh, first, and then second, it's about being competitive for us. So we go in there, try and do that. Uh, we like to be sort of interesting and take different ship builds. We don't want to have like 20 billion Paramidian battles or <laughs> mm -hmm. in a tournament in, in one weekend. So we, we try and take, you know, Junkers or Galleon or something interesting, hopefully. Uh, well, tell tell us about your team. What what's your current team like? And do you have the same consistent members every single time flying on your ships? No, we don't. Uh, we have uh, at the moment we have lots of members, and a lot of people are, are uh, less than inactive, and I, I or are inactive. Hmm. And uh, we don't kick anyone, so. Whenever someone comes back, we allow them to play just like anyone else. If they if they put their name on the roster first, then they get to play, sort of thing. You know, sometimes we pick and choose. We're not going to have you know four gunners and whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we try and have our best foot forward uh, along with whoever is definitely going to turn up. So that way we can get a little bit of practice in beforehand and so on. But yeah, we uh, we are trying to make a roster. We haven't had a roster. We've actually been around since. August last year, which is almost a full year now, and we still haven't ever had a roster, so that's pretty crazy. <laughs> that is, that is. Speaking on your roster and the members you have, are there any officers that assist you in leading the guild? Do you have any officers that you delegate a bit to, or is it pretty much just you that, that organizes things? No, I feel like there are other officers. There's uh, Comius Pony who helps organize the events mm -hmm. because, well, if I organize events, that's getting up at 4.30 in the morning or something. So I try and get him to make sure everyone's ready to go. Um, I think there will be other people as we go. There's Eridan, uh, Roman Carr sort of helps. Uh, Nara Saga has stepped in on the roster side of things. And, uh, you know, when I've been away, Yolo has come back and stepped up and taken the reins as, as he did in the past. Um, you know, Golden Glade, I guess, is sort of our on the uh, website side of things. He helps with that. Mm -hmm. it's, he does a little streaming on the side himself, too, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Every, every so often. I, I did a couple with him way back when. He's, he's an awesome guy. Uh, back to the point, though. Uh, of exactly where sacrilege is right now um you are relatively well known for you know putting a lot of time and effort into sacrilege and really being a bit of a micromanager at times uh do you feel that's fair the, or do you do you think oh, that's not that's not true or is that is that accurate i'd say that's pretty accurate mm -hmm. uh some people might even say i take a bit of fun out of the game but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Why? Why is that? I'm. I, I'd like to know more about that. Why? Why do you take that approach to things, and how effective is it? Um, I think it's it's sort of my personality, and it's well, the mm -hmm. history I came from as like you know what I was employed in and what I grew up in in the industry, and uh, you know because I'm a craftsman, and a lot of it is uh, shit ton of micromanaging. So, you know, and then mm -hmm. I moved moved up to being a foreman. So foreman, all you ever do is micromanage people and you teach people how to do something and then you make them do it exactly that way and they never allowed to differ from it. And that's where I came from. 
So I think that's come into the game. I mean, I, I never... I don't think I really asked to be a clan leader. I, YOLO was definitely the clan leader, uh, and I just stepped in. You're, kind of, you're just that extra driving force that makes sacrilege happen. Yeah. All righty. Well, with that being said, you have a couple more games ahead of you. You're more than likely guaranteed to at least get into the Silver League. Well, of course you're getting guaranteed to get in the Silver League, but you still have the opportunity to get into the Gold League as well. What do you think your chances mm. are of making the Gold League for the Festus Challenge? Um, I'd say pretty strong. I feel like we've come up against our biggest competitors so far. I mean, Glow Water Frolls are the only ones that really, uh, I think I had any uh, doubts about beating. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously I was correct. Uh, <laughs> They're a tough such, team. They're a very tough yeah. team right now. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, and, I mean, they do have that benefit of they always play together. They are the same you know, 12 people, you know, two different ship rotation or however it works, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from what I can tell. All right. Coming up this week, are uh, you going up against Zill's Merry Men? Odds against them? How are you feeling? Do you, are you confident about this game? Uh, yeah, we're extremely confident. Uh, I mean, they don't play anywhere near as much as our guys. Some mm -hmm. of our, I mean, our clan as a total probably plays the game more than any other clan. There's some clans out there that have 200 members, you know. We we love this game, you know. Like, this is, you know, the best fun we can have after work or if it's me just playing it all day because I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> you also have, uh, in Week 7, the Black Flight Squadron going against that team, struggling to try and uh, get a grip on a win, although they've had a lot of kills. They have not secured a win just yet. Still trying to find that one. And in Week 8, looking over things... You have another possible stumbling point in the Holy Roman Army, someone a team that as far yet has not been stopped. How are you going to approach that last game of the regular season? Uh well, hoping to take out a win, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't played them uh, ever, so uh, we haven't actually seen them in another tournament or anything yet. Have so, you, I mean, have I, you watched I would any like of the to... games they've been in? No. I, I, w I would like to have uh, probably had some experience against them coming up to it, but I've uh, haven't been able to. So I, I don't know how we'll go into a dry. It may even end up just being a massive landslide because, I mean, a lot of the time when you go up a team and you don't have any knowledge of them, you just you don't respect them and you just end up winning because, you know, you just go with the stride and it ends up happening. Like uh, you can see in different matches where we're taking the wrong builds and it ended up still winning. You know. It sometimes seems to work in our favor. Gropo, thanks for sitting down with me. Any closing thoughts you might have? Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Nope, we're good. All right, Tropo of Sacrilege, thank you for taking the time. Good luck against Zill's Merry Men and through the rest of the Hephaestus Challenge. No worries, thank you. That's Tropo. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll be right back with more of the Festus Challenge right here on twitch.tv slash the Robin Dan Joe.